guys, welcome back to another episode of this one's probably going to be a bit of a hot take. So I've actually been sitting on this video idea for a while, but with the release of Pokemon Legends ZA getting ever closer, I actually thought this was a really great time to talk about my thoughts on just the Pokemon franchise as a whole. So let me just start out this video by saying that I think Pokemon is a great and storied franchise. I think they're one of the most iconic franchises in the whole world, really. But I think Game Freak has gotten a little bit lazy recently. And me personally, it makes me really kind of sad to see the Pokemon games kind of stagnate while all the other Nintendo franchises are just going above and beyond, doing the best they possibly can, always taking new steps forward. And Pokemon, on the other hand, seems to kind of just be complacent with being, in one word, kind of mid. And you know, I do think it's kind of crazy how there are a lot of other franchises that are going above and beyond, like I said, but don't really receive a lot of fanfare, while Pokemon has been doing basically the same thing since the beginning of time itself. And they kind of seem to keep getting sales off of not really doing anything even remotely innovative. So let's talk a bit about the Pokemon problem and how I think Legend ZA can fix some of their mistakes. Okay, so to give you a bit of my background with Pokemon, no, I did not grow up playing the games because I didn't start playing video games for myself until I had a Switch. But of the games I have personally played, I have played Sword and Shield, Let's Go Eevee, and Legends Arceus, which was easily my favorite of all the three. Even though those are the only three games I have personally played myself, I've spent a lot of time watching playthroughs of Scarlet Violet, Gen 4, and a couple other games because just because I don't have the ability to play them, and no, I do not condone the use of illegal means personally, it's just not my thing, I still wanted to kind of experience those games to some extent. And also, like, let me be real, I'm not spending 60 bucks on that. I'm of the opinion that the game I want to spend my money on is the one I can get the most hours out of. If I showed you a list of the number of hours I've sank into games, they're at least in the hundreds, if not four or five hundred. If I'm spending 60 bucks, I want it to be on something I can get my money's worth out of, not something I'll only get 20 hours worth of and be like, eh, I guess that was okay. I just prioritize games that have more content or more replay value. Pokemon currently has neither. Now back to my thoughts on the games I played. Sword, I generally liked. Let's Go Eevee was a disappointment. And Arceus I thought was actually really good. Is it the best game I've ever played? No, not by a long shot, but it was genuinely fun and it was nice to see them go a slightly different path because I think it actually worked out really well for them. So why do I think that Game Freak isn't putting out their best when I've generally enjoyed two out of the three games that I've played? Okay, so number one, the weak graphics. I'm sorry, but in this day and age, there is no excuse for graphics that look straight out of the early 2000s when Xenoblade is right over there. Okay, I don't want to hear anything about, oh, the Switch is hardware. Bullcrap. Xenoblade is right over there. It looks gorgeous. Pokemon has no excuse. Like, genuinely, I don't think there's any reason why a game should cost $60 and look like this in the 2020s. Scarlet Violet, in particular, really felt like a step back in terms of graphics because it was just so unstylized. Now, I know, obviously, I'm a hobby artist, so of course art is something that I care a lot about. But I think I'm not the only person who felt this way. I don't think you should play a game or disregard a game strictly because of its art style. But the problem I had with Pokemon Scarlet Violet in particular, just by looking at it, was just the complete lack of an art style. It's one thing to not like a game's art style, but this one had no personality to speak of. I mean, there was just nothing there. It was just a huge step back in terms of how the game visually looked because I looked at it and this genuinely looked more like a Pokemon knockoff than it did an actual Pokemon game. And let me also be very clear. I am not a fan of hyper-realistic graphics and I do not want them to go down that path whatsoever. But what I would like is for them to find a decent stylized art style that is very distinct, unique, and consistent. There's nothing wrong with experimenting a bit between games, but come on, they don't look anything alike and it just felt like they keep taking steps backwards. In my opinion, some of the most memorable games are ones that find a unique art style and they just run with it. Take Splatoon, Genshin Impact, even Zelda to some extent. When you pick what you want your game to look like and you run with it, it makes the game feel very distinct and unique. But Pokemon just feels like like a generic game. Like this feels like something you'd pay maybe $15 for on PC because it's Pokemon-like. 
not like actual Pokemon that's charging $60 and has a long history of being a very popular franchise. Like the graphics are just very poor in general, all things considered, but the non-existent art style just contributes to this. And I genuinely see no reason why one of Nintendo's flagship franchises looks like this in the 2020s. But it's not just the graphics I have a problem with. The story is an issue. Wait, I'm sorry, did I say story? <laughs> sorry, what story? There is no story. Every recent mainline Pokemon game attempts to have a story, but it's so narratively weak that if you honestly didn't know it was there or have completely forgotten about it by now, I don't blame you. Look, I'm not asking for a Fire Emblem type morally gray story, but what I am asking for is something and they actually remember it throughout the game. There's plenty of successful games from Nintendo and other developers that don't have a super deep or complex story, but still actually have a story and you know it's there and you're not constantly asking yourself, wait, is there other stuff going on in this game? You don't have to have a complex plot to do a plot well. Super Mario Odyssey, come on, that's not a complex plot. Literally, Peach has just been kidnapped, but yeah, I still felt like the story was far more present there in what you were actually doing than Pokemon, where there's a story going on, but everything you're doing just relates to becoming the champion, basically. So it's totally easy to forget that there's something else apparently going on. I mean, they're just always shoehorning some basic plot into the usual become the champion goal. When you're thinking too, these are totally at odds with each other. Tell me why we're focusing on becoming the champion while at the same time somebody is possibly ending the world. Like, I feel like one takes a little more precedence over the other, but yet somehow we're putting them in equal, like, values with each other. Like, at the same time, yes, we're trying to collect our gym badges, but we're also constantly thinking about how we have to save the world. But we can't save the world until we get some of those gym badges because they're just so important. Like, I don't really care how deep the plot is as long as it's not just pushed to the side and it's actually present throughout the game. But Pokemon is always trying to do something and then they just miserably execute it. Where, I, again, I would totally understand if you didn't know there was anything going on at all. Apparently every game has a villain. You wouldn't know because they completely forget about them within a few hours because you're so busy becoming the champion that it doesn't matter that somebody's trying to bring back some ancient Pokemon from a thousand years ago to just end the entire world because they want to. Because somehow you becoming a 10 year old champion collecting your stupid gym badges is more important than that. And the total lack of a plot also leads to totally lackluster characters. Yeah, so no voice acting does the newer games a major disservice. Almost every single game now has some sort of voice acting to some extent. And I don't think every single game out there needs to be fully voice acted, and honestly, I wouldn't want it to be. But almost everything usually has some sort of voice lines, even if it's just sounds. And Pokemon with all of its dialogue boxes is the perfect type of game that would benefit from having just these basic voice sounds. Like when I think of something that would work really well for Pokemon, I think something more of the Zelda type where people make subtle noises and maybe there's a couple fully voice acted lines and cutscenes, but it's nothing really over the top or overly present, but it makes things feel a little less flat. Like, I don't know, I think it's really weird how they have these semi cutscenes, but like nobody's making a sound. So like the character will be like, oh, but then they won't make the sound. So you'll just see the silent thing and it's, it's super off-putting. And it just does a total disservice to all the characters who seem like they could be interesting, but a lack of a voice, it just gives them no oomph. Like there's also just a lack of memorable characters, as I said. I feel like Nessa was really the only truly popular one from Sword and Shield. I couldn't tell you anybody from Scarlet Violet except for maybe Nimona, who I think is from that game, but even then she's not exceedingly popular, which is kind of crazy when you think about the fact everybody knows who Cynthia is. A lot of people know who Steven Stone is, people know who the older protagonists are, but I don't even know the name of the Gen 9 protagonist if they have a name, and I wouldn't know the names of the Gen 8 protagonists either, which I played if I hadn't Googled it myself, but everybody knows who Serena, Hilbert, the others all are, <laughs> you get my point. And I haven't even played those games yet, I still know who they are. I think it's because they just, I guess completely forgot how to make characters memorable. And so every character kind of just feels like a rehash of the previous gen's characters. Like, I feel like there's just no good character writing and there's just not a lot of interesting character designs that really catch your eyes. So when you combine the two of them with no voice acting, what you end up with is characters who are easily forgotten by the time the next game comes out in 12 months. So let's just talk about a big issue I personally have with these games compared to a lot of others. There is nothing new in the gameplay department. 
there is nothing new that recently has been pulling me to want to play the games that I haven't played yet on the Switch because it feels like it's just going to be very, very similar to games I've already played. You know, this is kind of a time where a lot of games have really been branching out and testing new ideas to be competitive in this space, but Pokemon, knowing how popular they are, has just stayed the same, not really bothered to change anything, hasn't really experimented, hasn't really done anything new in a time where so many other series and games and developers are going above and beyond constantly trying to do new things, really push the limits on what's possible. And Pokemon is totally happy not changing a single thing for the last 10 years years. The only thing I can think of recently where they kind of felt like they tried something new and took a risk would be that open world, the wilds in Sword and Shield, which was actually a testing ground for Legends Arceus, which even though it was kind of, you know, people have mixed feelings about it, people love the concept and clearly it materialized into a game that was actually really good. So good things happen when they try new stuff, it's just for whatever reason they don't want to try new stuff. And like even just in terms of enhancing their existing gameplay, there have not been any new types. There are barely any Pokemon that have been like new, like new, new. The only one I can think of is Yamper off the top of my head because I love it. But there hasn't really been anything. People have been asking for new evolutions, new types, and they just have not been introduced at all. And I don't understand why, because that seems like a pretty easy thing to introduce all things considered. And like the best way I can kind of describe how I feel about the unchanging gameplay is that Sword and Let's Go Eevee felt like differently themed versions of the same game, which I can't really say for any other game series. Like take Xenoblade 1 and Xenoblade 2, right? They're both from the same series created by the same developers, and yet they feel totally unique right? They're both in the same series, and yet they have totally different gameplay and mechanics and literally everything. Even if you compare Xenoblade 1 or Xenoblade 2 to Xenoblade 3, where there's more overlaps, they still feel like very different games. The best way I feel like I can describe how I feel about some of the games that are on the Switch right now, it's like, it's like when somebody says they want to copy your homework and you're like, okay, but you got to change it first. It's like they were like, hey, we got to release a new game for the upcoming holiday season. I know the last one only came out a year ago. We got to release a new one now. And someone's like, all right, just copy and paste the whole thing. We'll go back. We'll tweak a few things, add in some new character designs. People will buy it. And then people do. So I guess it does work, but it's a little disappointing. But yeah, the lack of new gameplay features really just does not make the new additions to the mainline games really feel worth playing. You know, I was like kind of in a gaming slump and I was like, maybe I should try Scarlet Violet. And I was like, why? I've already pretty much played it twice. And also, here's something else I just want to point out. I understand that the primary audience for these games technically are children. I understand and respect that. But when you're not adding any new gameplay features in, maybe something they could do is make the games harder, like have a harder difficulty setting. Like They should not make the base game harder, but a harder difficulty setting at least would make it a little different because you'd actually have to use strategy. Do you know how many times I had a Pokemon lost during the main game of Sword and Shield? Never. I would actually use a type that was like extremely weak to other types and somehow I would still win every single time. Like it wasn't even fun to a point. So if they added like a second difficulty level where you'd at least have to use some strategy, I feel like if they weren't going to add anything else new in the gameplay department, at least that would help at least a bit because then you'd have to change how you play it. Now, are they going to do that? Absolutely not, because every time people suggest something that would logically make sense to make a better game, they just go, no, don't fix what ain't broke, and they don't fix anything. I mean, they're just coming up with absolutely nothing to create a new and memorable gaming experience, and I don't think they're earning my $60. There's nothing pulling me in that's like, I think the whole game is worth trying for this. There's just nothing new. There's nothing to draw players back in. And the only people I can see being drawn in are hardcore fans or people who have never played it before and don't know. I mean, they really do feel like siblings to each other, the games, where it just feels like every new entry is a slightly different iteration of the game that came before it, where every time they're just like slightly tweaking it like ever so slightly. Like take Fire Emblem, for example, right? A lot of those games are not related to each other. And even if they were, they're just so different in between entries that it makes every game worth playing. There's aspects of the game that are core to the franchise and are going to remain relatively unchanged. 
And at its core, you're going to know it's a Fire Emblem game. But every game, I feel, is worth playing because it's different. It offers a different experience. Different cast, different location, different story. Wait, Pokemon does the same thing. But somehow, for whatever reason, Fire Emblem manages to do this and make it feel like a distinct game that's deserving of your money. Well, Pokemon feels like they've just reused basically most of their assets, changed it a little, repackaged it, slapped on a new cover, and said, it's ready for sale, boys. Like, there's just no uniqueness between titles. There's no compelling worlds, no compelling characters, not even really compelling music anymore. Like, I just, I can't even find good tracks in the new Pokemon games. There's just nothing stellar about them, and there's nothing too different varying between them. Everything that's different is just okay, like the one that came before it. Now, fortunately, it's not all doom and gloom in the Pokemon sphere, so you can take a breath of relief, because Legends Arceus was definitely a step in the right direction. The graphics, while they still weren't amazing, they were a huge improvement over where the other games are at. And while the story too was just okay, and I was really hoping they'd do a little more with it, it was definitely present throughout the whole game, which is something I really liked. There were a few twists that were well appreciated, but what I really liked is how you knew there was always a story going on. There was a purpose in everything you were doing. There was an overarching present narrative, which is something I feel is lacking from the mainline games, and they did it well this time. Additionally, I want to say that the smaller cast of characters versus having gym leaders actually did this game a huge favor. There were only a couple of really notable characters in the game, and by notable, I mean there weren't many characters in general. It was Arizu, Adaman, Irita, Volo, and that's, I think, pretty much it. But because there were only a couple characters, it, they actually got time to shine. They were present more than just once or twice in the story, they had at least better designs, but because they got more time in the story, you actually got to see more of a personality, you got to interact with them more, and I felt like they were a lot more memorable because you actually got to see them more. So in this case, I think having a smaller cast of characters definitely did the game a favor. While some games like Fire Emblem or Xenoblade can handle having a bigger cast of characters, you have to put a lot of time into it to write those characters well. And in a game like Pokemon that wants to be shorter and that's okay, you don't have time to flesh out a whole bunch of characters. So in this case, I think having a smaller cast, just, it was huge. And also, the new catching mechanic. I loved it. Like, finally, something decent. I love the catching mechanic. It was a lot of fun. And I really hope they continue to use the catching mechanic in the future, because it worked really, really well, and it was a lot more fun than having to do a battle every single time. But so I mentioned Legend ZA at the start of this, and as we all know, Legend ZA is releasing at some point next year, which I'm actually really excited for. But what do I want to see fixed in the game? For one, I want to see some voice acting. Ideally, I think Zelda style would be perfect for Pokemon with a couple of voice acted cutscenes, but more importantly, just basic runs when text box pop up. Something that gives the characters a little more personality because they have their own distinct voice while not being over present and annoying. Also definitely want to see clearer graphics with a more stylized art style. They have so much potential with ZA being set in Lumio City to really make these graphics shine. I feel like buildings might be easier to do than a natural world, so they have an opportunity to really play with the graphics here, play with stylizing stuff, and make this game look pretty and crisp. And also, since CA is set in a pre-existing region, I really hope they put a bit more time into new catching mechanics or new Pokemon. Given that this is a region we've already seen before, it's obviously going to be kind of similar, which is fine. So I hope they instead put that time into really enhancing the world that's already there and bringing in new catching mechanics and hopefully some new Pokemon too. I understand the new Pokemon thing might be a bit difficult given that this is already set in a pre-existing region, but most certainly they could add in a few new catching mechanics or other new gameplay features that involve catching and battling that would make this game really stand out. Okay, so here's one big thing I really want, not just for this game, but for all future games. More freedom. The games are very linear in the way they progress. It got fixed a bit in Arceus, but the mainline games are very incredibly linear, and there's not a lot of freedom. And again, this can work, when you're not changing a lot of other things and the games feel very similar, it feels like you're doing the same freaking route across several different games a million times. So I think allowing the players more freedom, maybe it's choosing totally different paths in the game, some different routes, just literally anything different, just more freedom. Maybe you can see the routes in different orders. I don't know what, but I'd really like to see more freedom in how you're able to approach the game and play it versus a very 
tight progression. I'd also just really like to see more interesting characters with this one, even if it's characters we're already familiar with to some extent. You know, if they're interesting, if they get some screen time, if they're characters players can really love, then that's what I want to see. But I think the most important thing for me with this game, given where it's at and what we know about it, is that I really, really, really want a good overarching story. This game, personally, has so much potential to me. I think being set in Lumio City gives them the opportunity to do something completely different and unique, not just for Pokemon, but for Nintendo in general. I think this gives them the opportunity to explore a completely different environment, do something completely different narratively, and do some really different stuff gameplay-wise. And I really hope, above all for this game, they seize that opportunity and create a new gaming experience for Pokemon. They have an amazing opportunity to do something very different. It's not what we were expecting at all, and I am okay with that, as long as they execute this well. I think a good story is going to be absolutely crucial to this game's success, because when you're set in a tight area like that, you really need something narratively going on to keep things going. So I really hope whatever they have planned is something really, really solid because I think this game is going to need it to succeed. And like a lot of the stuff I'm hoping for for ZI is stuff that I hope we'll see in future mainline games as well. You know, but I, I do think the mainline games need to deviate a bit from the eight gym leaders, follow these routes, become the champion formula, even if it's just in a different order or something. Like maybe we have a character who used to be the champion and then they were beaten out. Like maybe your first like battle of the game is you being the champion and you lose to someone and now you have to try to do it over again. Maybe part of the world is already unlocked because you would have theoretically done these routes before. Like something different. There's nothing wrong with keeping these same elements, but I want to see them presented in a different way or a different order. I'm like, for real, just, just a solid plot, please. Solid plot, new Pokemon types. Just bring something new and exciting into the games, please. And like fun side stuff too. I remember in Sword, I really enjoyed buying stuff at the shops. Like I'm pretty sure they had clothing shops. I really like doing those. So I think side stuff can break up more repetitive gameplay a lot. So I think it would be really cool if they had those maybe in side quests too. Like not a lot, just like some where there's ways you can break up the monotony of just the battles and the roots. I think this would honestly do a lot to give people a more favorable impression on the gameplay because they're not constantly inundated with it. But like, don't let everything I've say like fool you or give you the wrong impression. Like, I do enjoy the franchise and I like the franchise as a whole. I'm just kind of disappointed with how Game Freak has been turning out very safe and mediocre games lately, and I think a lot of people are too. You know, it kind of gives off the impression of a developer that knows they have loyal fans, and rather than trying to bring something new to the fans or excite them, they just want to pull more money out of them, which is not a good look at all. And I think if you know you have a passionate fan base, you should really be striving to give them the best experience possible rather than striving to fill your wallets with millions of dollars from games that are just copy pasted from the last gen. And I mean, with the Switch 2 on the horizon as well, and with Legend ZA and the success of Arceus, I think now is the best time for Pokemon to do something new and unique with their games while still being true to Pokemon and the franchise itself. They will have an opportunity to presumably have a console with better graphics, better just processing and hardware, and they have the opportunity to have a fresh start on this new console. Maybe there'll be a day one purchase game. I have no idea, but this is the perfect time for them to do something new. Really push the boundaries of what they've done before and just provide their fans with the game they deserve. And, you know, I want to make it very clear that I understand that these games are first and foremost, like I said, for a younger audience. And I don't think these games should be extremely difficult at their base level. And I don't think they should have a super dark or deep narrative if that's not something developers think they can do in a well-presented way. Because, you know, these games are for kids and I don't think Pokemon should be turned into something it's not. But as we've seen with TV shows like The Last Airbender or even Bluey, you can make stuff that is geared towards kids that is still good, you know? Just because it's for kids doesn't mean it should be lacking in quality. You can make stuff that kids enjoy and is geared towards kids, while adults will still get a lot of enjoyment out of it too. And if Bluey signifies anything, 
It's that you can handle dark topics in ways kids can understand and adults can relate to even more. And I mean, I know a lot of people like the newer games too. So if you do power to you, you know, that is totally valid. There were a lot of things I enjoyed with Sword. I just could recognize it had a lot of shortcomings. But if you like the newer games, you know, I'm really happy you do. You know, if you think you're getting value out of your $60 and you're having a good gaming experience and that's what matters most, and do not let me sway you into thinking that you shouldn't like them. Because if you like them, that is what counts. But anyway, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are specifically on ZA, but of course you can talk about the franchise as a whole, and of course I'll get back to you. But re I really am excited for ZA to come out. Like, it's probably the game I'm most excited for right now, honestly, because I just feel like it has so much potential to be something we haven't seen before with Pokemon. And I would really like to think, given that this one is almost certainly going to be a Switch 2 title, that they can finally pull out something that is going to be unique and incredible and i'm so excited for it and i really hope that i'll be enticed to play whatever their next mainline generation is because again i would really 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 like to have a really awesome pokemon experience i like the series at its core and i really want them to put out a game where i'll be like yes i can't wait to spend 60 dollars on that it's going to be great and that's what i want them to do so I'm really, really hoping that this is the start of a turn for the better with the Pokemon games and that they're going to make something absolutely incredible. And one last word for me, if you haven't played Arceus, then like you should stop watching this video and totally go get it and play it because that game seriously is good. But I think that's all for me today. So yeah, I'll see ya. Also, if you watch to the end, hi, I'm sick. <laughs> I've been sick for the last week. I was like, I'm not going to make a video this week because I have exams and projects and I was meeting up with a bunch of people. Like, as soon as I turn off the camera here, I'm running to go have dinner with somebody. So like, <laughs> I'm busy. But I was like, you know, after a week, I should definitely sound better. And I do think I sound better, but like not 100% if you can't tell. So I don't look nearly as terrible anymore, nearly. But yeah, it has been a fun week. I don't really have new updates for me, but thank you guys for all the love on the uh, Fire Emblem short the other day. I'm really glad you guys liked that because I thought it was so dumb. So I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I will try to keep to a normal schedule this week because I am actually going home, which is very exciting. I haven't flown in like half a year now, so hopefully I don't have a freak out on the plane. But you know what? That's life. So yeah, thank you guys again for all your support. Thank you for watching this. Thank you for humoring me and all the stupid stuff I do. Uh, yeah, I really don't have any more to say. So uh, go out there and have an awesome day. Bye. Also, I miss Amelia Watson. <laughs>